Hey guys, Danny Johnson here, and today I'm going to show you how to bleed the brakes on your Tahoe, Suburban, Silverado, basically any of these GM trucks. And it's really the same process for just about all cars. But what I like about uh, the bigger trucks like this is you can just crawl right under them. Uh, you don't necessarily need to lift them up and take the wheels off and everything. You can just leave them on level ground as long as you can fit underneath it. Okay, so under the hood, you'll find your brake master cylinder with reservoir right here. And so, uh, first off, you'll notice that it takes dot three in this case, so that's what we're going to be using. Um, for this procedure, you can have the cap on uh, or off, it doesn't really matter. We just want to make sure that we're constantly keeping this level between the max and minimum line. You do not want the fluid level to drop below this minimum line or it can start sucking air into the system. And that's what we're trying to bleed out. If you go below that line and start sucking air into the system, then you have to start all over and bleed it again. So um, it's very important after bleeding each break or even in between doing each break that you come and check this level. Now all we're gonna need is this 10 millimeter box end wrench and uh, you don't want the ratcheting one. We're going to want to be able to open up and then close the valve um, very quickly. Now when bleeding brakes, you want to start with the wheel that's farthest away from the brake master cylinder. So that's going to be the passenger side rear, and then we'll move over to the driver's side uh, rear, then the passenger side front, and end with the driver's side front. Okay, so what you're going to need is a little bottle. This is the actual kit that comes that you can buy. But people have used a Gatorade bottle or whatever they've come up with. Um, but the whole idea here is we're going to fill this bottle up to a level where the tube that's coming in will be submerged. And that way uh, it won't allow the uh, fluid to go back into the brake line uh, of the car. So uh, basically you can see this goes down about that deep. So we're going to fill with clean brake fluid just in case it did come back. Um, we're gonna fill it up to about that level and then put the, the lid back on. And then we're gonna be using this uh, to bleed the brakes. Uh, brake fluid, very important. Uh, do your research and find out what you wanna use. Um, in my case, I wasn't gonna mix them and do anything like that, so I'm also doing my Yukon. And both of these cars uh, from the factory take DOT3, so that's what we're going to use for that. But uh, you want to use clean brake fluid, and it does expire once it's been opened, once air gets into the system and moisture. Uh, that's kind of what ruins the brake fluid. So, um, so we're going to fill this up with clean brake fluid about halfway through the bottle so that that uh, tube can reach it. Okay, so I filled that up maybe even a little high, but anyway, our tube can reach down into that fluid now as we screw this back on. So I did start with the passenger side rear wheel first, which is farthest away from the master cylinder. And for that, I just slid under and bled it. And But to show you the process, I'm going to remove the uh, driver's side rear wheel, just in case you are gonna be removing the wheels for this if you don't wanna slide under it. So I'll show you that process and what it looks like from that angle. And then uh, we'll jump back under the front uh, without jacking the car up. Okay, so next we're gonna break all the lug nuts loose. We're not gonna remove them at this point, but just while the vehicle is on the ground, we're gonna take our 22 millimeter socket here, and we're just gonna break all the lug nuts free, and uh, then we'll lift the truck into the air. Okay, so we lifted there, put the jack stand there, and now the wheel is just slightly off the ground. So we're gonna go ahead and remove the rest of these lug nuts now. Okay, next, remove the wheel. Okay, next you're gonna locate the brake caliper. And on the back side right here, you're gonna find uh, this little cap for the brake bleeder screw. So we're gonna go ahead and just remove that cap, set it out of the way. And that is where we're gonna be attaching our line. Okay, so we're using our 10 millimeter wrench I prefer using the box end side so that you don't strip uh, the screw here. Um, however, when you do put uh, this over the end of it, you will notice that that nipple doesn't really stick out too far. Uh, you still can get away with it though. Um, and so what we're going to do is bring in our hose here, and we're just going to place it right over the tip of it, 
and it will still uh, seat on that even with the wrench in place. It's just kind of a tight fit, but that's on there now. Uh, so uh, to open the valve, we're gonna go counterclockwise, so this way, and then to close the valve, we're gonna go clockwise, which in this case is gonna be that way. Now, um, we also have our bottle strung up over here. So the line's coming up here, and we're hanging our bottle, uh, which is filled past to where the tube on the inside's coming out. So it is elevated higher than, than this part, and we're gonna go ahead and uh, pump on the brakes now. Okay, so my wife is now inside, and what I'm gonna do is have her pump the brakes and then hold the pedal. So she's gonna pump it, pu go ahead and pump it three times. Okay, so she's pumped it three times and now she's holding the pedal firmly. I'm gonna go ahead and break this open and her pedal will go down and that's fine. She wants to just keep pushing it down, but she's not gonna let up on it until I tell her to. And that's after we've closed this valve back up. So we're gonna go ahead and break this open and now I'm gonna close it, okay? So in that amount of time, the pedal has gone down. Um, but now that we've closed the valve again, she can now lift up on the pedal, pump three times again. Okay, now she's pushing on the pedal and holding down. We're gonna go ahead and open this valve once more and then close it again. Okay, now she's gonna repeat that process again. Go ahead and pump three times. and hold on the pedal. We're gonna go ahead and open this up and close it again. Now I don't know if you could see, but in here we did have some bubbles go through, so we are getting some air out of the system. Okay, so go ahead and pump three times and hold. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and open this and close it. There we go. Now go ahead and pump again three times and hold. Okay, she's holding the pedal down. We're going to go ahead and open and close. Now after you've done that a few times, we want to make sure that our fluid level hasn't dropped. Okay, so this is a good time to check the level and you can see it has come down a little bit. We're nowhere in our danger zone here. Luckily this holds a lot, but we're going to go ahead and just remove our cap and we're going to fill this level up a little bit. Now it is really important when you're done to test drive and drive around and see if you've, you know, the heat uh, will expand the fluid a little bit in the system. So if you uh, do add fluid, you want to kind of check that level and make sure that you haven't overfilled it. Okay, we'll continue. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is just move on to our next wheel. So we're gonna remove the hose and the wrench. You will have uh, fluid there, so you wanna kinda hold it upward so it doesn't spill everywhere. And we're gonna go ahead and replace our cap for this wheel. Now we'll just move on to the other wheels. Okay, so we're actually now on the passenger front wheel. We're underneath the truck. Uh, in this case, we're not removing the wheel or anything. It is accessible if you want to slide under here. And so we're going to do the same process. So here's the bleeder screw. And remember, this is on the inside of the wheel looking outward. So we're going to go ahead and remove that. We're going to put on our 10 millimeter wrench and our hose. We're gonna make sure that our bottle is higher. So go ahead and pump three times and hold. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and open this and then close it. And if you saw, some bubbles came out, so that was a good sign. Go ahead and pump three times. 
and hold, open, close. Okay, that looked pretty good. Pump and hold. So she's pumping the brake three times and she's holding the pedal. We're gonna go ahead and open and close. Okay, one more time, pump three times. And hold, now we're gonna go ahead, open and close. Okay, so this wheel's pretty good now. I'm gonna go ahead and remove our tube. And replace our cap. See how easy that was? We'll just move over to the driver's side front. Okay, so this is the driver front wheel from the inside. Once again, we just crawled under the vehicle since uh, it's already high enough up. I'm gonna go ahead and put on our wrench and our tube. Okay, so our tube is in place. Just sliding our 10 millimeter wrench right over that. And we have our bottle now higher up. Okay, you're holding? Okay, we're gonna go ahead and open and close. Some good bubbles came out that time. Go ahead and pump three times. Okay, hold and open and close. Okay, so once again, same process. We finished it up and put our cap back on here. Okay, now we're gonna check our level. You can see the minimum and the maximum, and we're a little bit below the max. And uh, we're just gonna to top it off here a little bit. And once again, drive around, and uh, then look at the level again. Truck's on level ground, and we're gonna put that right at our max line. Okay, next we're torquing this down to 140 foot-pounds. We're doing a star pattern going across from each lug nut to make sure that it's equal and we'll do that a few times. Don't forget your wheel key. Okay, now's a good time to drive the truck around and make sure that everything's right with it. And check that fluid level a few times after a few trips that you make uh, in the near future. And as always, if you have any questions, go ahead and put them in the comments. Thanks for watching, and uh, be safe out there. I will include a link in the description to all the other videos I've done on this truck in case you're interested in seeing those as well. So, thanks for watching.